New plot points intensify, and the mystery of Black Goku is beginning to get peeled away. Hello there, beautiful friends from around the world. I'm your host, Black and Fist, and this is my review of episode 50 of Dragon Ball Super. And as we all were promised, Black Goku is here to fuck shit up and intimidate, and that he does. And of course, when Goku sees this kind of situation, he quickly steps up to fight him. By the way, I do like that little remark Goku gave to Vegeta on how he's always faster on beating Vegeta to the punch of a new challenge. Ugh, sorry Vegeta fans. What proceeds is that Goku vs Black Goku fight that I thought we were going to have to wait till the end of the arc, but we're getting it here now. This is definitely the best constructed fight in the entire series because it has something that a lot of the other fights in Dragon Ball Super are lacking. You see, one of the weaknesses that Dragon Ball Super has had with its fights um, even the best of them, the intensity of the fight cannot be sustained all throughout, and I really have to see that as maybe that there's a budget issue. The best previous fight to this one, in my opinion, is the Goku vs. Hit fight. That has been the best intense fight that's sustained throughout, but I do believe that this fight between Black Goku and Goku beats that one. This Goku vs. Goku fight lasts for half of this episode, but it really kept my interest more than any fight of a similar length in Dragon Ball Super, and that had mostly to do with how dynamic the fight really was, the way it was presented, the way it was animated. A lot of the fights in Dragon Ball Super, what they suffer from is reusing a lot of anim animation, using stills, a lot of that, even talking for instance, and, and don't get me wrong, talking is necessary for a show, but sometimes I do feel that it's only used because they need something to run out the clock with. But in this fight, there were some talking, not much, very little of it. It was all seemed to be necessary in my book, but more importantly, the fight was presented in a very interesting and dynamic way in the most interesting fight of its length. Another thing I really do appreciate about this fight is that Goku, although he was holding back, he didn't go far beyond. He didn't go into a Super Saiyan God and a, or a Super Saiyan 3. And what I really mean by that is, if you have watched my videos, I don't like the idea of characters holding back that much. I understand it happens sometimes, and that's fine. But I don't like that being overused. And what I really did like is that Goku didn't hold back just to go out even more all out later in the fight. Instead, and this is what I really appreciate about this fight, is that instead, they took an opportunity to really shine a light on Black Goku's character. Him not being able to take on I believe a Super Saiyan 2 Goku, which does shed some light on what kind of strength this guy is. Which by the way, I do like the fact that Black Goku isn't an insanely overpowered villain, because if you do remember, a lot of the other Dragon Ball villains, you know, Frieza, Cell, Boo, they all progressively got stronger as the arc continued, and I think that that is something that this arc, that this Black Goku is going to be taking in. It's a Toriyama thing, and I think that's one thing that really does need to continue on in Super, because although it's it's great to have characters like Hit, who are already insanely powerful, and yes, they improve, but they're already at such a level where it, they're pr pretty damn intimidating, but I think it's also important to have, a, on the villain side of things, development and growth for him as well because it could be kind of boring when you just have an insanely powerful villain that never grows they just stay the same the second half many key plot points and items are revealed probably the biggest item to what we're talking about is that time ring that black goku possesses this really is the focus of a lot of this episode i have a feeling that this time ring is going to be a focal point throughout this entire arc but for some reason black goku is forced to the time period from which he came Whis explains that the time ring and time machine had a reaction towards each other and that it seemed that the time ring was trying to correct the time flow or whatever the fuck i'm not sure because there was a lot of interesting things that Whis was saying in this episode that i'm not quite sure what it means yet because obviously it was just explained in this episode but for whatever reason the time ring it seemed forced him back into his own time there was a lot of things that stood out to me in Whis's explanation but the biggest one was he said time rings were only reserved for the gods now this has reinvigorated the conversations of whether or not Black Goku is a Makayo Shin. I, I still have my doubts that he is a Makayo Shin, but at this point, this the story could go all over the place. We also have to keep in mind that that green Kaioshin or Kai looking guy, we don't know if he's good or evil. He hasn't even come to the picture in yet. But Whis also explains that it's even forbidden for the Kaioshin 
to go back into the past. He said that it's okay for them to go in the future. Now one key thing is that as Black Goku was forced back into his own time, he destroyed Future Trunks' time machine. Now this obviously caused a crisis for Future Trunks because now he's stuck in the present. And with Black Goku now going on to the future by himself, it's pretty easy to see that he is going to have no one to stop him. Now, upon learning of the time rings, Future Trunks begs Beerus for him to use the time ring so he could follow after Black Goku. Now, Beerus is probably not the best person to ask for a favor, especially considering the circumstances, and also take into account that why would Beerus want to help Future Trunks to save the destruction of a planet? I mean, he is the god of destruction after all. But luckily for him, Bulma had a trump card. Something that I honestly forgot myself and didn't realize, but yeah guys, remember there are two time machines. So it seems not all hope is lost, but I will say, with Whis and Beerus now knowing of this time machine, I mean, it, it kind of, and with them clearly stating that time travel, time manipulation is only reserved for the gods, and that even further than that, going back to the past is something that even gods are not permitted to do, Will Beerus and Whis permit them to use the time machine? Probably. But I will want an explanation as to why they are going to let them use the time machine, if that's what's going to happen. If they just clearly laid out the rules, and not to mention Beerus and Whis, especially Beerus, are not the two fondest of this whole time machine thing. But of course, the episode ends off with a something I called from the beginning, and yeah, it was my She's Not Dead. This I don't think was a surprise to many fans, as on Twitter, I asked everyone whether you thought Mai was coming back, and the overwhelming majority of you did say yes. I guess it really wasn't the boldest prediction that was out there, but it also makes me think, I mean, Mai is stranded there in the future with Black Goku, and she's pretty powerless to do anything against him or go back to the past. So she's in a pretty bad position where everything is stacked up against her. So I'm very interested to see where that goes. But anyway, guys, that has been my review for Dragon Ball Super Episode 50. And if you like my thoughts and my critiques, please subscribe to the channels. I'll be bringing you more Dragon Ball Super reviews like this one, as well as my other Dragon Ball segments. But until next time, guys, I'm Black and Fist, and I'm out, man.